Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be looking at how to make a level select screen similar to one you would find in like Super Mario Bros. 3, where you have all the levels on a world map and you just go from node to node, and then you can press your button and go to that level. So here's what it's going to look like when we're done. So we can press the directional keys and uh, we will go to these different nodes. And uh, for this one, we're gonna be using something called the easing object. So we're gonna insert some stuff. First, drop in the easing object. Then, in work, then we're gonna need some actives, put in one active. Call this one the player. And this needs a value. Give this a current ID value, okay? <clears throat> now we're gonna need the node. So let's call this node. Now the nodes need to have a qualifier, so throw one in, and this can be whatever you want, but I'm gonna make this qualifier zero. Um, and this also needs two alterable values. One for ID, and two for level ID. And that's gonna be which level this particular node sends us to. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some art real quick to make this look good. Okay, so now that we have this art in, uh, let me explain what this is. I also added another object, which I called level. All this is, is another node with the qualifier zero. Um, the difference being that I'm going to manually give these levels level IDs so we can place them around. And um, you wanna change the art, obviously, to correspond to whatever level this is. There, I just added two more. So we got three levels, level one, level two, level three. And if you look at the values on them, you see the level ID corresponds to the number on the image, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and toss this node down here by the player. Let's toss, let's just put some nodes around the map. Now keep in mind that this is gonna be four directions. So you do wanna make sure that the nodes can be reached by um, pressing up, down, left, or right. Okay. So let's go ahead and insert a new event. We're gonna insert a start of frame event. And in this one, we're going to spread the IDs for group zero. So go to alterable value, spread value. And that's going to be alterable value A. And we're gonna make that one. We don't wanna spread zero this time, we wanna spread one. Um, we actually forgot a very important object. Insert one more object. And this is going to be something that we're gonna call node detector and go to the properties we do not want the node detector to be created at start we are going to create this when we need it so let's go ahead and insert a comment and this is going to be down we're going to just start with down so we will say the keyboard upon pressing a key and that's the down key what we want to do is create an object and that's going to be the node detector and we are going to put that relative to our player and then we're going to start a loop so go to fast loops start loop and we're going to name it down and we're going to run this 1000 times now keep in mind you need to run this the size of your frame essentially because it needs to be able to cast all the way across the frame Make sure that we are creating the object before we start the loop. Okay, so on the down loop, we are going to set the Y position of our caster object to itself, its current Y coordinate, plus one, because we want this to move down. Now go ahead and create another on loop event. And again, this is the down loop. And we wanna find out if this object is overlapping the node objects, which is going to be group zero. So if that happens, we want to destroy the caster object. Then we're going to go to the easing object and we're going to move object. Select the player. Um, you can change the easing modes here, but just le I'm going to leave it as the default for now. So now we get to insert the X and Y coordinates and those are going to be the X and Y coordinates of group zero, which is our node group. So grab the position X coordinate of that node and do the same thing for the Y, grab the Y coordinate. Now you get to uh, the, select the time span of the tween here, of the easing. It can be milliseconds or event loops. We're gonna do milliseconds and I'm just gonna make it 100. 
Now we need to go to the loops, fast loop, stop loop, down. Because we do not want this loop to continue to run after we have hit the object that we are trying to hit. All right, let's make sure this is in the right order. Destroy, move, stop loop. Looks good. All right, so let's test it. So we can go down perfectly fine, but then we can't move again. And that's because we need to set up an ID system where we grab the ID of the object we have hit because what's happening is we try to cast it again and it creates the object at the player and uh, instantly makes another collision and moves it right back to that node. So we need to make sure that there's an exemption for the node we're currently on. So to do that, we want to um, click on this here, go inside the event. We want to insert, <clears throat> we want to set the value on the player of current ID to the value from the node. So retrieve the ID from the node group zero. Now we need to add an exemption. We need to make sure that the node group, or sorry, that the current ID value under the player is different than the value of ID under the node group. So retrieve that ID. And now we should be able to move off of this. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and insert an always event here at the top, and I'm always going to bring the player to the front because right now the nodes are overlapping him. All right, so that is basically how this functions. We just need to uh, do this for every single direction. So let's do it all over again. Now we're going to do up. We're going to copy most of these events and just modify what we need to. So we're going to change this to upon pressing up. Uh, we are creating the object, starting the loop. We need to rename this loop, though, from down to up. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have caps on. It's good to keep, uh, keep the same convention for having caps or no caps. Okay, I'm going to copy that same event there, and I'm going to edit everything I need to. So change all instances of down to up. <clears throat> okay, so on the loop here, all we got to do is turn this uh, plus one to a minus one because we're moving in the opposite direction. And uh, everything else apart from this stop loop is the same. So let's check it now and see if it works. Okay, so that works. Let's go ahead and throw these level nodes around. Um, I guess we'll make... Whatever, it doesn't matter. Level 1 will be there. Level 2 will be over here. Level 3 is down here. Okay. So this is pretty much how it works. So just grab all these lines of code, copy and paste, and change the things that need to be changed like we did above. So we gotta change the arrow, still start the loop. So that's all right. Uh, on loop right, on loop right. Start loop right 1,000 times. <clears throat> Stop loop right. And we need to delete this and move it to the right. So set the position of the detector object to its X coordinate plus one. That should be fine. Copy it all. Do it again. Left. I'm pressing left. Yada, yada, yada. You get what I'm doing. Just change all instances of the direction to the direction you need. Make sure you move this detector in the correct direction. All right, let's test it and see how it works. Okay, 
So the only thing left to do... Here, let me add some more frames real quick. Okay, so what I did real quick is I set up two more or three more frames, and all they are are frames that have a numbered box. And this is so we can test to make sure that the way to go to levels works. So to do that, let's just add another comment down here, and we'll say go to levels. So find out if the player is overlapping a node. <clears throat> Whoops, sorry. Find out if it's overlapping object group zero, which is the node group. All right, and then find out exactly what this uh, the group zero's value of level is is uh, equal to. So compare to alterable values, and we're going to go to alterable value B, um, which is the level value. So we're going to leave zero nothing. Zero is empty because we still we want a value of zero to not take us anywhere because we still have these nodes here which don't take you to levels and those are going to have the value of level id zero so the levels we're concerned with are one two and three those are the values so check for value one copy and paste this and edit this so that it checks for value two and edit this one to check for value three so <clears throat> one more thing we want to require a button press so upon pressing enter as well. So I'm gonna copy and paste this onto each of these events. And it goes as follows. If you are overlapping a node, the value of that node is one, two, or three, and you press enter, we are going to go to a specific frame. Now, if this is not how you have your level set up, maybe you're loading or something, this is where you would do your, your loading algorithm. But uh, I'm just gonna use a frame to correspond to a level. So level one, we're going to jump to the frame with the one in it. This one, we're going to jump to two. And this one, jump to three. Let's test the application. All right, so I go to one and press enter. Boom, I'm on level one. Start the application over. Press enter on three. And we are at three. Let's check the last one. And we are at two. Now, if you think the speed is too quick, you can control the speed of how quickly he eases to the object over here when I, in the event where we moved it. It's um, very simple. At the end where it was in milliseconds, instead of 100, you probably want something like 1,000. But it's totally up to you. 1,000 will slow him down. See, much slower now. All right, guys, well, that pretty much covers it. It's not really that complicated. This is how you make a level select screen, such as you would find in Super Mario Brothers 3 for the NES. If you don't own that game, I recommend you check it out. Um, so if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below, and I will try to get back to you. Um, also, as always, it would be probably the best thing for you if you need help to join my Discord channel. Lots of helpful people in there. And, um, yeah, that pretty much covers the whole thing. I will see you guys in the next video, and as always, thank you for watching. Almighty's and Taco out.